With life becoming all kinds of ups and downs, sometimes asking for help might be a solution to a roadblock that, you know, you're facing. Today, we talk about the fear of asking for help and we discover why do we sometimes feel awkward or uncomfortable when we have to ask for help. Oh, uh, where are we, man? <laughs> Oh man, welcome back to the podcast everyone. It is week X35255567 for MCOAB2. Man, oh. we have time skip boys and girls. Where are we at this point? Oh my gosh, how have, it's it's been a it's been a turntable week, guys. It's been a table turn week. Welcome it's to a, July. You made it past July. June. Oh. Um it's Another no year. surprise we're still here. Numbers are just, you know, on the uprise. Um, hopefully, this next two weeks of EMCO for those in the Klang Valley, uh, yeah. hopefully we, su- we, we do see a decline in numbers. But hey, it's not like we, it's not like we were going to get out of home in the next two weeks anyway. So strap in, buckle up, baby. Welcome to July. It's good to be back. It's the Mings and also with us, uh, you're going to see his face today. It's oh. Jeremy, our showrunner for the Table Talk podcast. Some know him as Jeremy. Uh-huh. Jammeries, yes. Jammeries. Uh, wrong. Yeah, that was the right. It, truly, thing. truly. It's yeah. uh, just a reminder to be safe. Take care, guys. You have uh, friends to talk to. Very mm. important. This is a point where I think we're, we're a year in, a year and a half. Um, it, fatigue of the mind is also settling in. So I think that's something that you got to be aware about. The past few mm. podcasts, we've talked about how you can reach out to friends, be a bit more intentional, know their love languages, go get caught up on those episodes if you want to. But mm. what we're saying is that you are surrounded by people you love and there's a community for you. So just get plugged in, guys. Um, mm-hmm. My boys, how are we feeling? It's July. <laughs> we have officially reached the second half of 2021. Man, six months gone now. Yeah. Oh, like that. Je- Jeremy, what say half, you? Half of existence. That Jeremy was the right thing. Like internally, we all know what happened. It was a crazy yeah. month. And now we're, now we're looking back, I, I, I don't even know that it's January past. Like, I felt like, I mean, last year. <laughs> Does it feel like you're in this year? Because when I think back it's January this year, I was like, oh, what? I, I felt that was like a last year thing. And then mm. now you look at it, we're now in 2021. Where yeah. were we last then, year? We were still in the office like, last and, year in, in January. Time? Actually, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, January yeah. and June. Because last year in June, yeah. things were let up, man. And because of the zero, I think uh, 1st of July, right, was yeah. when they had zero local cases. Oh, dude, year. we were on the yeah. right path. You we on the right path. Wow, that was very nice. And we, went we were from, in the office. We went from world example to joke of the world, you know, again. Wow. <laughs> both spectrums. We, we're we're well known for that, I think. I knew a country that there's both guys. That's, oh, that's if you just... don't deserve me at my best, you can treat me at my worst. What the <laughs> true heck, words, man. true words. You know what else is true, guys? Oh. If you are a uh, vaccinated patient, sorry, if you sign up for the AstraZeneca yeah, uh, mm. vaccine, just a reminder and public service yeah. announcement that you guys should check your MySajatra apps for Malaysians because the second dose has now actually been reduced from 12 weeks to nine weeks. So you may already have your appointment for the second dose um, sent to you, but you need to check your MySajatra app. Jeremy, have you gotten yours? I've gotten mine. Yes, uh, we did I'm it so at happy. the same day, actually. Oh, but Jeremy. different places. So we won't be able only to Only if we could other. be hand in hand. <laughs> oh, but I'm very excited, actually, for the second dose. To hold dose. hands or what? Not, oh, for uh, the second dose. Yeah, yeah. Not the yeah. Um, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I'm very excited to get my second we dose. Are. So that yeah. I really complete the circle. And I think yeah. that's playing a very good public role yeah. in helping combat this virus. I, I did ask myself that when we do get our second dose, will anything change? You know, like there was a moment of defeat, not going to lie, but I realized that it's not just us, right? It, and it's something I was listening to uh, recently on a podcast about, the, about vaccines, right? It's not about you. It's not about like you being a little bit more safe from COVID. It's a community thing. Like the vaccines are not meant for like a one person to take and like, oh yeah, you're done. No, the vaccines are how an entire community fights against a disease. So that's a reminder the, for you guys to get your second dose. Yeah. The it's vaccine com- is com- the quote like unquote community. immunity. It oh. is. Immunity, yes. Uh, speaking about immunity, Immun- some of us in this house um, need help. Um, and I'm oh. spiraling. I'm spiraling oh. into a state of uh, if you if you watch my reels over the past month, 
some people uh, made a joke about it and I realized that there is truth <laughs> in, in what's been said. It's Ming Yu's... <laughs> uh, what's... The conversations spiral in your head. Spiral into <laughs> madness. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do realize that my reels are getting slightly... Out of hand, right? <laughs> I would think so. I would think so. I think so. Now, now you're in the right place, right? Because remember when YouTube started? Yeah. Uh, it was the first time that Mingyu, Mingyu and I kind of like... Because we grew up together. We did <laughs> straight in the, sa- stayed in the same room together. But yeah. during that time, Mingyu was in UK dealing with depression. So there was no spiral into madness. Yeah. Uh, but I think right now, Mingyu is... Mingyu is going through what I spiral into to start the YouTube channel uh, yeah. at some at some point. Uh, you know, that spiral of madness of like, yo, uh, talk, you, you, the voices in your head need to get out somewhere and then yes. you yes. suddenly write them on paper and you act them all out. Um, it, it's, 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 it's a mad time. Uh, people people need to ask for help, man. Uh, mm. it's, it's the cries for help. And speaking about help, that's, that's, that's what the topic is today. Is, you know, is the descent into madness help is, is waving the white flag help is... Uh, yeah. That, that, that cry for help and we are no we are no stranger to cries for help guys just just this I think past week the white flag movement and today I read about the red flag movement which is oh which is for uh, animal caretakers oh um, apparently the red flag is uh is uh, you gotta tell people what the white flag one is first man uh what the white flag I mean yes. for those I I honestly at this point if you guys don't know what the white flag movement is where have you been um, <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Yep. It, it, where have you been? You, you, there is no reason that you don't know what the white flag movement is. Yeah. It's basically this thing where uh, I think the Rakyat, uh, they, I, I, I don't know who the origin of the white flag movement is, but it is a situation where people have been asked if you, know, if you need help, if your household needs help, if you personally cannot um, fend for yourself anymore or you cannot continue your livelihood, um, yeah raise a white flag in front of your gate and there yep. will be no judgment. There will be no shame. This is a sign to your community that you potentially need help. And, and, and in terms of like, I think either monetary help or, you know, livelihood help. Lah. You know, I'm, I'm not sure about people who need, you know, partnership and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, teman, you know, that kind of help don't have a, a flag yet. But it's it's been a bit interesting because yes, there has been some very interesting um, help given out like I saw you know some of the mentry and some of the the politicians actually going and making a change you know helping individuals kickstart their lives again but at the same time there has been a really weird uh, like there has been a really weird opposition to it as well where some people are just like no you put your flag down or we'll fine you yeah, and yeah. It's, it's just created so much I think the discussion of asking for help and whether it is okay or not you know, because to ask for help is a sign of, I mean, absolute humility. You've given up, you know, you mm. need help, right? Mm. Why, and, 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 and why some people are okay with it and why people are not, not okay with it, that is just a question mark to me. Yeah. At, at the, you guys saw, I mean, I mean, you guys have all saw, right? The, the, wow, this is crazy to say, but you guys have seen the rebuttal, what's the, the word's not rebuttal. The word is, the anti-white flag people, you know, the the one that, I mean, there has been people who is like, you know, don't put white flag, you better pray harder, you know, and some people are like, don't put white flag, we'll find you, you yeah. know, um, and some are like, don't put white flag, it's a propaganda, and it's just like, people are literally dying, you know, and 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 these things are going on. What do you, what do you guys think about the white flag movement so far, guys? Jeremy, what, what, what think you? I think, it's a really great movement because uh, a lot of people are afraid to, to ask for help. And I think yeah. that's the topic today, right? The fear mm. of asking for help. And I, mm. and because of this movement, it kind of gives people some encouragement to to do it because it might be a bit scary to to say to someone, hey, uh, I really, I have no money now. I really can't afford yeah. my groceries yeah. and I just need some provisions. But, mm. but they might be very uncomfortable to say it. So mm. I guess this is a non-confrontational way where you don't have yeah. to physically talk to someone. Correct. You say, don't have to say yeah, it, right? Yeah. Hey, I need help. You just mm. wave a flag. And and I, I know like some like uh, YBs and all are saying you can just call a number, which is fine as well. But sometimes really people don't want to t- have that connection or like Correct. conversation Correct. because it's very awkward to them. Yeah. And I think this gives people a bit more encouragement to do it. And when you see the amount of love there and support that has been given to a lot of people through this movement, it is really encouraging uh, and I, I, I don't, for the other 
other side of the party for those people who are not a fan of it. I don't know what what they are affected. Like they, no one, no one's getting hurt. Everyone is just being exactly, loved. Exactly, exactly. It's such yeah. a it's such a loving movement. So to them, I don't, I, I I ask the question like, what's what's wrong with it? Like, mm. are you hurt by yeah. by this movement? Yeah, because no one is. Everybody's spreading love. So to me, I think it's a great uh, initiative. Uh, and props to everyone who's putting an effort and a hand yeah. in this movement. Yeah, I think when it comes to asking for help, there's always a reluctance to it, especially when you are used to not not asking for help, right? So some people have, uh, you know, some people think of it as, oh, uh, maybe I won't ask for help because I'm I'm troubling other people, or oh, what if people think lesser of me if I ask for help? And and, and these sort of mindsets are not. I'm not saying it's wrong. I think people just like handle it differently. Um, but in a situation like this, you know, again, I have to say the word pandemic. I know everyone's not a fan of this word anymore. But in a situation that we're in, I think it goes beyond uh, just the fact that oh, I have uh, I I have like this face value to 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 guard, and I I need to be uh, uh I need I need I cannot have people look down on me. But when you have when you're in a situation of dire need, right? When there's no food, when there's no like shelter or clothes for you, right? You need to ask for help. And I'm not saying that this is all the situation uh, for, for people across the country and everything, but for those who are raising a white flag, right? It may be more than just one circumstance. It may be different things. It could be a collection of things, but really what they're doing is they're putting um, just a statement on them like, I need aid and assistance and help. And I think yeah. what's heartwarming to see Malaysians uh, do is that the, the white flag movement is, is one form of help that is being uh, asked for and, and provided. If you look at even the start of last year when, 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 when things started to shut down in Malaysia, businesses were already very vocal about needing help in supporting their business. Um, there were Facebook statuses and posts about if you need food, direct message me. Like, don't be afraid to tell me that you need food. And mm. I love the heart of all these sort of people who are sharing these things because, again, the, the cool thing about help is that it's very, it's, it can be very easy or very hard to help somebody. Uh, I think we've talked about it in the past about, about how sometimes saying, not learning, not, not knowing how to say no can also put you in a position of trouble. Um, but the general idea of it is that if you can help somebody, if you can afford to help somebody, there's no harm in doing it. I think you're changing and helping mm. someone's life, right? Um, do you guys feel that maybe asking for help is a sign of weakness? Do you think that maybe it doesn't have to be like in a pandemic situation where you're asking for like like you know literal essentials, right? Um, asking for help in work, in in friendships. Do you think that asking or seeking aid is a form of weakness? I know I sometimes do. I think because ego takes place. Uh, I takes mean, like type it depends which layer of help you're asking for. Right? I have no problem asking for help all the time in college. I'm like. Uh, I had a good friend called Mel. Uh, I said, hey Mel, can you help me take down what the homework is? Uh? Or Mel, can you help me pass up my assignment? Uh? You know, I have really no problem asking for help one, seriously. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it again, it's just like, um, help, I guess help is definitely divided into what you feel is vulnerable to you. Lah. Let's mm. just be more specific, right? Because if it's not vulnerable to you, it's something you don't uh, really care about. You just ask for help. What? Like for yeah. me, Technically, uh, the things that are like, I don't mind asking for help. It's like, um, if I'm too busy, you know, and, and someone's going to get some coffee, I'm like, hey, can you help me get some coffee? You know, mm. or you, you know, you offer or that kind of thing. But I think in terms of asking for help that we're talking about today, like the help that we are talking about is dire help, right? Yeah. Uh, help that, that reveals your weakness, that reveals your situation that you're in, you know? And and it's a bit different as well. It's not like romantic help, right? Some people are in just romantic shit storms all the time and they always ask for help. I no, think, it, it could be that as I mean, well. Okay, I mean, it could be that, yeah. right? And and more often than not, like um the dire help that reveals our weakness that is no in our not in control, is that the help that we are more I mean, is that the help that we're willing to ask for? Like is mm. is are you willing to tell people like I don't have enough money. I don't have enough food. You know, are you willing to tell people that um, I am not feeling the best? I need emotional help. You know, and uh, that that is the thing. And and I think in reality, our culture, and uh, you know, our collective Asian culture, which is very like hurt based and pessimistic or passive. Um, I think more often than not, like I've never, I've never in my life heard my grandpa asked for help, for example, or my grandma asked for help. You know, I've never had my dad ask me for help for anything. 
you know, no, it, like there has been so many stories of like I don't, I don't know whether you guys like know this this comics like called the woke salary man. Mm. You know, uh, they they've been drawing some really good stuff. I I, I uh, they highlighted a few things like the economic crisis of ninety eight. If I'm not wrong, is it ninety eight or ninety seven? Like it was quite some time ago, right? For the for the, for the sake of anything, I never remembered my dad asking for help, no matter how bad things got. Right, there, there's like no memory of that, you know. There's there is no memory of like my parents showing like or asking for help. And even now, you know, when when it's going through pandemic, my parents never ask for help for themselves as well. They always usually ask help for other people. So personally, I I think like have have I have I taken on that 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 um habit from there. I feel that I have to say yes. Like most of the time, I try to handle things myself. Unless it's like a team effort, you know, and it's it involves the studio, mm. or it involves uh, people I, as well. Then I can ask like you know, uh, like my parents or Mingyu, or I can ask my wife, or I ask Darren from the team to like you know, can you help me do something? Um, but I'm I'm at least glad to say that when it is dire help, when it is to do with, let's say if Haley needed to rush to the hospital, I have no problem telling my family at all. Um, mm. But again, you see, that's something. That's something restricted into the family. The white flag for help that's going on right now. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm I'll be willing like if I was in that place to declare to the world that I really need help. Yeah. You know, I I will try my best. I will keep on trying my best first uh, before anything else. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, what about you? I think what you said was really great. Like re- like maybe in that place you might really feel. I was try try my best to survive until to the point of going all the way downhill. And I think last year or mid last year I watched the documentary of uh like people in the pandemic, like who there was a I remember a guy who opened a garage right before the first MCO. And after that, after the pandemic hit, he had no income because the, the workshops couldn't open. And this guy just left his factory job to open a garage to fix yeah. cars in some rural neighborhood. And it was really sad to see that he lost everything because he put in money to open that garage uh, workshop and he wasn't able to fix any cars because no, no cars were needed to be fixed. Yeah. And he was just stuck in such a place. And I think he also felt the same uh, stress of like, I really want to do something but I can't do anything about it. And mm. I really didn't. And then he seeked help and I guess that's the beauty of it where the Malaysians were helping each other and there was this nice lady who helped gave his kids rice and, and necessities yeah. and goods. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's the it's the feeling of being very weak and really just being perceived in a very negative way. It's the, it's why we feel very scared to ask. I don't even want to say about like a uh, financial need or aid at the moment, but it could be any other thing like but emotional help where you're struggling through some very yeah. uh, dark thoughts for example, and you feel very uncomfortable asking people for help because people mm. will feel, look at you like, wow, this guy got a lot of problems. Yeah. Or this girl got yeah. well, a lot of issues. Yeah, so I, Jeremy, that's such a good point to make, right? So for example, if, if you think about a friend that you have who you always go to for maybe advice, right, about life. And let's say you don't have that friend. Maybe you are that friend to somebody that you are constantly giving advice out to friends around you who are like, you know, going through hard time or relationship, family problems, career problems, right? And you're always the one giving answers. But then now you find yourself in a position where you need help, right? There's a high chance, right? And this happens pretty often. Don't get me wrong. Um, it ha- it's happened to me as well. It, there's a high chance that you don't actually seek help or questions or answers from people around you because you've always been that lighthouse, that pillar. It almost makes you seem like, eh, how come now I'm the one who needs help, right? And I think humans, we have this fear of vulnerability because being vulnerable means you don't have control of that situation. And I can share about this because I think I'm 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 the perfect example of this. I have um, I I, I recognize that I do like to have control over uh, my own things and my own situations. So sometimes having the need to ask for help puts me in a position of I don't have control of, over the situation. That's why I'm asking for help. And again, some things may come easier than others. Some things for me, like maybe I can ask for help to hey, can you help me like uh uh, uh buy this buy this food or can you help me you know put together some like information that I'm not really smart at but the things that you are good at right the things that you excel at or people look to you for right those are the areas that I think people have the biggest problem asking for help with 
because that's where your ego and pride and that's where you find your identity in. So asking for help in those situations may f- make you feel that you have you are lesser value or you are not as yeah. perceived as, oh, uh, he was once or she was once as great as oh, that, that, right? Do you all think that's wow. the case? Oh, Jeremy. That was great. Oh, yeah. oh. That's, think- that's what I'm struggling with every day. Oh. <laughs> um, I think one of the biggest, like most humbling moments and this questions I've been through in the past year is with friends who have yeah. that image of being a boss, of being mm. a go-getter, of being a well-to-do, um, a well-to-do uh, person, right? Um, I feel that those people who reached out to me um, and have been very, very honest, like for example, if Dennis, you're hearing this, then it's been very, very transparent with the state, with the state of, with the state of his gym, for example. I think, I think it takes a lot of guts for someone to do that. And if you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, some people know Dennis's image, right? Or Dennis's stature. He's a super, like, super macho boss guy kind of thing, right? And and the most humbling things that he's had to do is he he's been so transparent to people, but you know. Um, uh, that gym health industry has been so hit that he needs help, that he mm. needs everyone's, you know, if you guys are willing to go. And I think it takes a lot of humility because you've got to stick up for your team, right? You've got to stick up for the people you hire, you've got to stick up for your investment. Um, I, I I did have a lot of respect for that. And even for our friends like Maggie and Joseph, when they were going through, uh, like even so health industry again, right? That whole... Um, that whole question mark of like, will it go through? I think the biggest thing that they've done is just reached out to sit down for a conversation. You know, there have been other teams as well that have been in the red and and just with nowhere to go. You know, sometimes the only thing, I mean, sometimes I wish the only thing from all these conversations is yeah. sometimes it's so much better to ask help sooner. You know, mm. like, like some people would rather hold out until their last strand of ego or like hold out until the end, which I think might be me too, right? Compared to like just asking for help right away. And you have made so much difference between like that last two weeks that you made, or two months that you asked for help maybe. Yeah. Um, it, but it's just a lot of respect. It's so much respect for people who are willing to show that um, they are quote unquote beneath an average situation. And I think that the, the Asian ego doesn't allow for that most of the time. Like, no, we, we need to be performers, you know. We need to excel, you know. We cannot show that we are taking two steps backward, yeah. right? Um, but if anything, I think even for us, like with the team, right, Jeremy, for everyone in, in the studio as well, some of the biggest things that we've been honest with everyone about was what the struggle is going to be like at the start of the pandemic. I feel that the biggest choice that we've made with everyone as well is we told people that, okay, it's going to be tough. This is... This is rough, man. The first three months was absolute negative, you know, that kind of thing. And and most of the time, it you know, it's it's the initial ripping off the bandit that's the toughest because I think when you tell people about the struggles, when they know where you are, like even for the team, the team in, in particular, you can work on something together. Compared, like everyone doesn't know what's going on. Everyone thinks it's okay. And then suddenly Oh, guess what, guys? We're in the shit. We're in the shit pile now. Guess everyone's got to go. You know, no one knows, right? And instead yep. of just, you know, instead of having the whole team working on it, it could have just been Mingyu, Brian, and myself keeping, you know, keeping everything to ourselves, you know, and 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 not being honest with anyone about stuff. So it's always that that struggle between ego and and just letting it all down for a better shot at you know whatever it is. And I, I man. Not many people, you know, not many people are ready for that. So many people would rather just go down the ship yeah. and instead of in, instead of like, you know, help me, I'm sinking at this point. Yeah. The, the, no, the scary, yeah. Do the you scary think, part is the emotional stuff. Do you think that maybe the reluctance of asking for help is not just, I mean, yeah, so we talked a lot about the ego and, and, and all of that, right? Um, do you think that maybe it's it's the fact that maybe you feel that people will feel that, oh, maybe nobody wants to help me or maybe I'll get rejected when I ask for that help. Um, the fear of being rejected I think just in general it's a very scary thing but when you're already vulnerable right if you think that okay I'm going to ask for help tomorrow but then you think about it like nobody's going to help me nobody likes my face you know does that make you even more reluctant to ask for help 
I think it does, you know? What do you guys think? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think because if you're so vulnerable, yeah. and yeah. if someone says like, oh, I can't help you, that <sighs> just takes such a... Oh, it's a slap like, way, yeah. Well, it's like, you cannot... You really so need the help, right? And someone tells you, oh, I cannot... Oh, no, I cannot give you. You are not worthy of this. Yeah, and... I don't know. I feel that more often times than not, right? That fear of being rejected or, or of people refusing you is actually the main reason why people don't ask for help in a lot of situations, right? Not just by giving you things, but maybe no one wants to help or nobody wants to understand the situation. I mean, you could be in an abusive relationship, but you don't reach out because you feel that no one's going to understand you. No one's yep. going to give you the help you need, right? And just because of that, you just keep quiet and, and, and march on and soldier on. It's mm. oh, dude, it's it's rough, man. I, I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, wow, men- mentally, that makes you feel even lonelier than ever, right? I I think it goes back to this rule. I mean, I've, we've said we've mentioned this so much. We've mentioned this so much on on the podcast, right? When when it comes mm. to like romantic stuff, when it comes to friendship, when it comes to yourself and everything, right? You only can truly help a person when a person wants help. Yeah, you know. And, and the crazy part about that quote-unquote rule or that dynamic of help is that you could be in the worst of circumstances and if you yeah. don't want help, no one can help you. No one, no one. Like, yeah. it's mad, you know. You know? It's, like you're, it's like you're in a pool trashing around, right? And then I throw you a float, but you don't hold the float. What do you want me to do? Yeah, there's literally, <laughs> not just that, some people puncture the float and say, you think I cannot swim, is it? And like, no, no, bitch, you're kind of drowning at this point, I can see, you know, like, no, 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 give me some time, I'll be fine, you know? And and oh. some some people are like that because, trust me, you, everyone has got this Chinese uncle or auntie in their family, right? You mm. try and give them money, uh, what, they smack your hand, you know? It's like, you think, uh, you know, yeah. don't, uh, you know, that kind of thing, you know, hamka, all these kind that's, of things. That's crack. You, that's you crack. think, you think I'm what, you know? And, it comes from that 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 Asian pride, you know, that yeah. don't don't take care of me, I can fend for myself, you know? Yeah. Because we come from a generation like my grandpa who just passed away, he came from a generation where he he went into the jungle to dig for potatoes, you know. Mm. Like that never say die attitude. Like like the Japanese were showering them with bullets. This guy is like, no, I need my potatoes today. I'ma die yeah. another day, you know? And he goes and barehandedly digs for food for his family, you know? Yeah. So like we have that ingrained into our DNA, which is like never say die. And the crazy part is like that 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 how how would I say that semangat, right? That spirit is there no matter what the circumstance. And it can potentially be just coupled on with your ego into this, you know, into this situation where no one, I mean compared to my grandpa, we can't even go out and dig for potatoes now. You know, mm. we can't do anything about it and we would still not ask for help. You know, I think that that struggle to actually let your guard down, let yeah. your image down and, and, and really just think for the best for everyone is tough because yeah. we went through it. What We went through um, the team and, you know, versus passion versus the love for what we do, the creative stuff. Like everyone pivoted. I think, I mean, you, Brian, and myself, we sat down and we talked about this and we told each other that, look, guys, it's, it's not about, you know, it's not about having fun anymore. It's not about uh, doing what we love and passionate and our dreams. It's not about sacrificing dreams and not chasing dreams. It, it, it's about letting all that down and focusing on surviving and doing whatever it takes. So be it asking for help, changing direction mm. and whatnot, what really got us past that ego phase of like, no, we are creatives, we are creators, we make content, you know. What really got us past that is that realization that the only way we're going to get back to this is we need to survive another day first, you know. To me, that made sense. To me, if I had my family behind me and I had my ego, I'll be like, yo, screw this. I need my family to survive another day. I'm going to do whatever it takes and ask for help, you know. And that helps me get over that fear of ego, that fear of like, oh, I'm vulnerable. And I, yeah. I, I think when you do it for more than yourself, it helps. But for mm. some people who are on their own, that could be a struggle. I, I feel that could be a struggle. It's a bit, it's a bit scary. Lah. It's a bit scary. You know, people could use that against you as like, oh man, you, you messed up. You, you real messed up right now. 
But yeah, um, our times, what doesn't, what doesn't kill you make you stronger? Ten a little taller. Uh, okay. Just uh, know you're not alone. <laughs> you know? Ugh. It's, I don't know, I'm just thinking about so many things right now. Like just the fact that sometimes, sometimes we, sometimes the only thing preventing change from happening really is ourselves, right? Um, I want to quickly just touch on another point, another angle of this before we start to like, you know, call uh, to, to bring this podcast to a close is sometimes we, I mean, we, we, obviously we're looking from the point of, of, of asking for help, right? But then from also the point of giving out help, um, th- there's, there's two of it. One is, of course, you know, you, you, you give and you, you help to the best of your ability but don't put yourself in the situation where you know you're burning out. You know your output needs to match the input as well. If not, you're probably going to be asking for help really soon as well. Mm. So be smart with that. Um, I think that's this general knowledge, right? But I think sometimes and this is a conversation I had recently. Sometimes we are quite judgmental, and I, I I've been guilty of this. We find I, I've been in a position where I've been quite judgmental about the people asking for help, right? I think sometimes as humans, we are we have the potential to be very, very, very cynical about who is asking for help and the context of it. Perfect example, you're in a coffee shop. It's not pandemic time. You're in a coffee shop. Someone comes to you with like this coin box and like, would you like to donate to these you know, certain charities and all that? I remember when I was younger, I would be like, we got to give to everybody, mom. And then my mom was like, that's fine. <laughs> you can, but you're going to start to need to realize and understand who are you giving to? Where is the money actually going? Then that kind of like made me think, actually, yeah, who is, is, maybe this money might never even see the children in Africa, right? Or maybe we bring it back closer to home and we say that there are certain people who, you know, the position they're in, right, is self-inflicted. You lazy, that's why you're in this position. You stupid, that's why you're in this position. You never work hard enough, that's why you're in this position. And I think it's very easy to pass judgment like that. And then from that, that stems our, that, that becomes the reason why we may not offer help to people. But I was also thinking about the flip side of that. And if if there was, this is the best illustration I came up with about this situation. If there is a stupid, annoying child at a pool party who wants to swim and this boy can't swim, but you told the boy, don't jump in the pool, right? You tell the stupid kid, don't jump in the pool. And he's like, you know, pulling your hair and everything. And the kid doesn't listen to you. The kid jumps into the pool. The kid starts to drown. You're the only person there. Do you A, not save the kid because you already told the kid and the kid knows he can't swim. Mm-hmm. We're currently drowning. Will you just tell the kid, ah, ha ha, you stupid. I see you, you're, it's self-inflicted, right? Yeah. Or B, do you save the kid? Because as a human, that's, it. I, I'm not even going to use the word, that's the decent thing to do. As a human, right, you do everything in your best ability to help another human survive. And I think that's what I'm trying to get at, right? That there may be an argument, that there may be a point of like, some people ha- are in a situation because they deserve it or they're self- it's self-inflicted. But realistically, if that kid was drowning, I don't think we would not do anything. I mean, I would let him, I would let him like oh. run down for a while. Lah. I don't no. know about you guys, <sighs> right? No? Uh, I give him like a timer because people usually yeah. can survive without air for like 30 seconds at tops, yeah, okay. you know? He's so joking, like, everybody. He's joking. I yeah. let like, hey, ah, how's it feel? How's it feel? Told you, right? Told, say, say I'm right. Say I'm right. Then I jump in and go I, up, you know? So, <laughs> I feel that there's always a learning experience for people, but that's not the point we're getting at, <laughs> I feel. Um, I think if you guys are out there, um, oh, maybe this is a great time to drop it as well. We're going to be launching an, an initiative as well, right? I think um, we've been very blessed to be in a platform that we can spread news, we can spread entertainment, we can spread help. Um, the Takeaway Table uh, has an arm called the Dudot Ruma series, you know, one of our, our TMT, sorry, one of our TMT content that we made on Instagram, right? And yeah. one thing that we've done in the past, I mean, you guys already know, it's a lot of local support for local brands. So one thing we want to do as help as well is to really amplify, you know, you guys, like, I'm pretty sure you guys know that, um, Randomly, there'll be KOLs with food here and there, right? And even Mingyu and myself, like we get offered food sometimes. And I feel that we should make the most of that. So for everyone in the F&B industry, we also want to offer some help uh, yeah. and we want to make it fair. So we don't want anyone to feel like they're beggars, okay? Um, we're going to be launching it on Instagram. So check out for that. It's at the Ming thing. Um, and we're going to be starting with the F&B industry first because yeah. honestly, I don't know how to do any other industry at the point. Um, but it's some help that we want to give out. So please, 
this is like an exercise, okay? If you have a struggling business uh, like in the F&B industry, if you need some help, please reach out. We also yeah. want to be able to to at least um to at least be there for someone. And that actually made me made me think of something that's good for a close. If you see someone in dire help, be like a good friend and make that help easy to get asked for. You know, don't be like a bitch and be like, hey, oh. told you so, told you yeah. so. Nah, who asked who for help? No, don't, don't be that. Be a warming, open, we- arm, welcome pair of arms, right? And yeah. just say, you know what? I'll be there for you. Don't force them to ask. Just say, I'm here for you. I'll be here for you. I think the only time you should intervene if it's uh, an, an, a danger to themselves or to someone else, livelihood, but be someone who is also easy to ask help from. I think not, not just someone who wants to ask for help, but be that warm welcome mat, lah, you know, which yeah. is which is rare lah, huh, these days. Just saying. Just saying. That's, That's uh it. yeah. You guys can definitely check that out. It's yeah. gonna come to you soon. But back to what we're talking about today, I think help is something that is very easily overlooked. It's very easily asked for. Sometimes it's not. It's something that people constantly at each point of their lives struggle with, right? Certain days, it's easier to ask for help. Certain days, it's not. Certain things, it is. And sometimes, it's just the hardest thing to ask for. But at the end of the day, I think if you're in a position where you realize that change needs to happen and you are not able to do it alone, that's the perfect yeah. time to ask for help. Yeah. Um, and, and, and just the fact that there are people around you that care for you should be enough. And hopefully, it drives you to a point where you realize that there doesn't need to be a fear of rejection when you need to ask for help. Yeah, guys? Yeah. For sure. Man, this is this is something yeah. that we're probably going to pick up again and talk about because it's such a big topic. Uh, I feel like this is... Man, there's so many levels of this, right? There's there's the pandemic help. There's emotional. There's like friendship, Mental. career, relationship. There's so many things. It, yeah. Um, but let us know what you guys want to hear and talk about next. If you have someone that needs help, maybe reach out to them. Don't have mm. to make a big deal about it, right? Don't ask them, oh, you really need my help, right? Don't, don't make it a moment about yourself, right? Mm-mm. That's the best advice I can give you. And that's why I'm a big fan of people uh, who, who give the, the, like the, the white flag movement, right? If you are going to give someone aid or buy them a, a food package, right? Don't need to go and take Instagram pictures and be like, oh, today I gave up. Shut up! Uh. Like, I will shout at you. You guys know how loud I shout. It's like, don't make me shout at you, okay? Mm-mm. Just do it just because you want to help a person. If you're doing it for the gram, then screw you lah, monkey dog. Oh, wow. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean that. I kind of <laughs> did. Mm-hmm. This week's song recommendation <laughs> is from Shen. She just dropped a new one this Ooh. past week. It's called All The Other Boys. Check it out. It sounds like this. Ooh, what a bop. Jeremy, how was that, Jeremy? True, truly, what a... <laughs> What a great song. <laughs> honestly, congrats, Shen. Um, I, I honestly really, really hope that, that you guys find something throughout your day that is a small bit of happiness, a small slice of joy, so that at the end of the day, you can look back and be like, you know what? I'm grateful for this. That's an exercise that I'm trying out for myself because there are some days where I'm just like, oh, I need help. <laughs> I need to do something about it. So I'm just trying to be very intentional and aware of my situation. Guys, any final parting words, words of encouragement and support? Hit us, Jeremy. I think uh, today what we've learned is that mm. many people are willing to help if you do ask. Don't have to think too much. Yeah. Just go for it. But very, very important words by Ming Yu is if you are a person that can offer help, please don't be an asshole. Just offer the help True. with open yes. arms and just you know help them out. Don't need to go don't up and down a mountain. Yeah, And yeah. it's not about you. It's about not the person in help. Correct. That's why you got to say, man. Ming yeah. what you got? Suck in it, guys. Just oh, oh truly, just, just perfectly put. Do what perfectly you gotta do. Just do. Take the L, guys. You gotta take the L to take the W. After that, you what, know what does that mean? Just take take the loss. The lost. Take so the L. Take the win. Yeah, like hey, if you play a game, you lose. Yeah, yeah. 
You gotta okay. stay up with the kids' lingo these days, man. You gotta take the L, oh, sorry. man. I can't. I'm F so old, dude. Come on. I mean, <laughs> you gotta. Shucks. You gotta take I'm the L so to bad. take the W another day, guys. You Crazy. can lose the battle, so like but you lose, don't lose the war. Lose the battle, win the war, lah. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, that's it. That's okay. it. You gotta, it was so poetic, you know. Once upon a time, but you know what? That's just me being old. If you're young and happening, guys, jump on and join our Discord community server. You can join us on discord.gg slash the takeaway table. We've got a. We've got a variety of people. We've got young popping kids. Okay, I can't say that. We've got young people and we've got especially older people like me who are just, you know, struggling with the times in general. Wow. Join us if you need people to hang out with, to sing, to play games, to watch stuff and enjoy and life help. together. Oh, get help. We have yes. so many like help sections in the server. Join us on discord.gg slash the takeaway table. We are almost, we are about 2,000 members now. Oh. Um, and if you guys want to be part of the community, just join in. We're also available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Make sure you get caught up with all the latest podcasts. We're popping and pepping. Man, takeaway table is just, we've got so much content geared up for you, but we can only roll that out when MCO lifts. So just stay patient. Minghan and I and Jeremy are still going to be here every week for you guys. We'll do our best. It's not easy. I'm going. I'm not going to lie. Some weeks are harder than others. Sometimes we struggle with coming up with topics, not just because we don't know what to talk about, but because we're so drained mentally. Um, because we're also like doing work and running a business, and we're still trying to feed ourselves. It's difficult, but I think that we we have an internal commitment to each other and to you guys as well to just kind of make something to be shared. Because again, at the takeaway table, it's not just about us. It's about giving you guys something to talk about. Mm. Carry that conversation outside of the podcast, focus, guys. Focus. If, Stay connected, yeah. guys. Stay clean. Why, what, what does Mingan always say? Wash, wash your, your Wash your phones. Wash, I say that, yeah. Oh. Mingan says wash your phones. I say wash your butts. Another leading know. area of disease, yeah? <laughs> guys, check your MySajatra apps if you haven't <laughs> gotten your notification. Just a reminder. And have a great week ahead, guys. We love you. Stay safe. Yeah. Oh, man. They White flag all day, guys. Always ask how are you because there's always a how in Ni Hao. Oh, truly. Egg sucking. Thank you. See you guys <laughs> next week.